like a prime steak, I've been tenderizing the midsole of the Adidas Adizero Prime X for around about 50 miles now. How did it work out on today's long run? Let's take a butcher's. Hey cats, welcome back to the channel. It's Ed Continental Bud here. Welcome friends and footwear fanciers alike. Today I've got a long run review for you of the Primex from Adidas. Before we get to that, if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button, but also click the bell below for notifications of when I roll out those new videos for you. And it does really help the channel out. If you give this video a thumbs up like, but also share it with your running buddies. Danke schön. I took this huge stacked beast out on a 14.25 mile run today. That's about 22.8 kilometers if you like that sort of thing. And I do. I returned to longer runs and it felt darn good, guys, I've got to be honest. At last, my arm and my shoulder felt like I was worthy of a long run, that I could do it to the best of my ability. Things felt back to normal today and zero pain, so all round it was great. I hit the country roads and those trading estates to bring you the long run review today. Wait on screen right now for my UK 11 in this shoe. There's approximately an 8.5 millimeter drop in the Primax and mine have a 56 millimeter heel stack. So uh, just think, Mark Bolan or mud tiger feet keeping things very easy today eight minutes three seconds per mile which is pretty much bang on five minutes per kilometer with the heart rate nice and sustainable absolutely perfect conditions out there guys I almost took the shades with me that's the first time I think I've probably considered doing that in January very dry out there and little to no wind to worry about we'll start as always with the long run shoe review with the upper first Upper-wise, there was nothing to moan about here on today's long run. I cinched the laces, got out there, and I didn't think about it again. Very easy to achieve a good lockdown here and consistent over the 14 miles. In fact, the materials I would suggest are barely an inconvenience. They keep out of the way, letting the midsole do all the heavy lifting. Well, I say that, the midsole, the rods, the blades, and the carbon plate, and all that other shenanigans in there. I've been using a runner's knot when utilizing the Prime X. The laces are long enough for that. Just about no pressure anywhere on top of the forefoot and no blistering at all. I sometimes get that on some longer runs round about this area here on that medial side on the toe box, but nothing today, which is great. It was about six Celsius out there and it was about warm enough for these. I did wear a slightly thicker Adidas sock. I'm not sure that this is a shoe I'd grab without hesitation if it was freezing. That cellar mesh is exceptionally thin and I don't think it's a really great winter choice. If it's winter, you want a shoe that's got an upper that's kind of like a Jack Daniels and Coke or a cup of cocoa, I suppose. This is more like a bottle of Mets. So very, very comfortable in the upper. I had no rubbing here. The lockdown was superb. I think it's a lot to do with this band around the back of the shoe and you can't get away from it, guys. It's a little bit like the band you get on the back of Crocs. Some people won't want to admit that, but it's true. Midsole now. So the midsole is where all the action's taking place in this shoe. I found it to be a shoe that gets more and more familiar the more and more miles you put into it. I think when you take them out of the box and first run in it, it's a little bit of a novelty, but it becomes less obscure and less sensational, I suppose, the more miles you get into it. Just feels like an extension of my body now, a little bit like my pool cue. So I think if you have picked them up and they felt a bit odd to begin with, do persist. So over my long run today, I probably only experienced one real moment of instability. I miscalculated the placement of a pavement and a curb, but I would have done that in any shoe, not just the Primex, even in a lower stack shoe, it would have been the case. I'm gonna make a very important statement here about the Primex. I believe that the foam they've utilized here and the amount of it, the carbon plate, the blades, the energy rods, absolutely do lower the perceived effort on your run. The heart rate and the impact to your legs, all of that is reduced, it's attenuated. That rolling nature of the shoe does really smooth out the transition. The foam itself is ridiculously cushioned. I got to mile 11 or 12 and I felt like I'd hardly ran at all. It was amazing. Really did leave me feeling fresh and energized. My legs feel great right now. Bear in mind, I haven't done a long run of this magnitude for some time as well. So to be able to do that today in the Primax, it really does show. It means business. I think the blades and the rods incorporated into the midsole do really make it an effortless experience. It enabled me to get to five minutes per kilometer pace without really trying that hard. Never moving out of my aerobic effort zone whatsoever. A heart rate there, 133 beats per minute across the 14 miles. 
That says it all. Even when I approach 7 minutes 30 per mile a little later in the run just to test the shoe out at speed on some heavier legs, I still only got up to about 142 beats per minute. So I think that tells you all you need to know about this shoe. I can absolutely understand now why this shoe has been placed on that list of shoes that elites cannot wear in races obviously this isn't allowed in elite racing you can see why now in my honest opinion it does have an unfair advantage over other shoes i mean it's available to everybody now in terms of the general public you can buy them right now on the adidas website but you can see why they've put that restriction in place now i've run that distance over a half marathon and yeah I think if Adidas are able to distill what makes this shoe so ridiculously easy to run in and place that into a shoe that fits within the restrictions, then they can print money. I mean, that's pretty much what we got on the Adios Pro 2, though this thing is so soft and cushioned. I personally could reuse it as a recovery shoe. It doesn't feel all that unstable to me now at all. Is it the extra foam? Is it the carbon elements here? There's a quite considerable efficiency improvement to me anyway. Let's not forget that fastest half marathon that I ran was still in an Adidas shoe using this foam. Does that tell me something? Now, would I wear this shoe in a race in terms of what I found today? No, actually I wouldn't and here's my reasoning. A race has got bends, it's got corners, it's got occasional double backs. Plus it might be on one of the terrible pothole ridden roads that we have in this country. Some of them are just ridiculously bad. In training I can select routes that haven't got potholes that are on very even camber, just more consistent I suppose. I can cut out the double backs, I can cut out the bends. I've got control over the terrain which you don't have during a race. That's why I wouldn't use these in a race situation. There's just too much cushion there. And for me, really too much height. I don't need any more height. I bang my head on things all the time. Stonking though at training pace for me. Fantastic. So that's where it's going to stay for me, at least for now. Outsole now. And it was relatively dry out there. No big surprises here when you've got continental rubber underfoot. I just avoid very wet, boggy, grassy areas. It's absolutely an accident waiting to happen if you're gonna wade through a little bit of a muddy area. I did that unknowingly. I hit a piece of grass and I thought, looks relatively solid it wasn't so please beware of that if you're going to take this shoe out on a longer run avoid grassy areas i found the rubber fantastic today even on some gritty or debris laden roads the continental material works a treat and i hope we see the inclusion of the lugs and fins that we get here in the forefoot section of the primex into the adios pro 3. i've had to give the shoe a bit of a clean up it was pretty dirty earlier on not a huge amount of grit though got trapped in the fins here so very impressive there. The actual traction stayed very consistent over the miles. No issues slipping around here, but like I said, you don't feed a mogwai after 12 midnight. There's no major damage or wear, especially in the exposed midsole area here. If this was a next percent, I'd be expecting to pull out some thorns or rocks. That doesn't happen with Light Strike Pro. Even after 20 miles on the Gakuso next percent here, I've noticed that the midsole's starting to get a little bit damaged some things stuck in there, and even the rubber area here. It's no match for the stuff you get on the Adidas shoes. Imagine what a next percent would be like if you had a continental rubber outsole rather than this soft sort of foam rubber. I'll definitely get up to 100 miles in these without too much effort, no pun intended. So a very successful long run shoe in the Prime X. The forgiving foam combined with the rods and the fins does make for a real winner on the long run. Quite amazing, in fact. My legs feel really good. I feel like I've done maybe three or four miles, and I didn't. I did 14. What say you, people? Have you picked up the Primax? Did it work for you? Did you receive them only to be disappointed? Let me know down in the comments. Quick musical interlude for you. It's the new year. It can sometimes feel a little bit depressing to some people. You know, they've had that time off over Christmas. They need a little boost. Why don't you get it from listening to Teenage Fan Club? Their 1997 album, Songs from Northern Britain, is one of my favourites still to this day. It's just such a blast of tropical fruit juice in a lollipop form. Refreshing, like leaping into a cold swimming pool when it's baking hot. The intro track, Start Again, is beautiful. With its loose feel, beautiful electric guitars. Ain't that enough, just builds up and builds up. Such a wonderful chorus. Why don't we have tracks now with choruses like that? I Don't Want Control of You is again a wonderful song from Teenage Fan Club. Fantastic vocals here that mesh together. So energized and powerful. 
the sound of those electric guitars just moulding together. Makes you think of warmer times, perhaps some light at the end of the tunnel, which is coming. Go and check it out, guys. Songs from Northern Britain by Teenage Fan Club. Righty-ho. That's all for me for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching through to the very end. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and also click the bell below for notifications when I roll them out for you. And it really helps the channel out in terms of the YouTube algorithm if you give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.